Okay, we're back with Ella, who you might remember from a previous video where she's had an ACL recon. Now, she's had three ACL recons on this knee. Now, she's not in for that. She got that better. It's been a long time since I saw her for that. What she does now have is medial patella pain. Now, this is coming because she's now a road cyclist. She's doing a lot of events. She's getting some pain on the knee, and we've got to work out why. Now, part of it is her knee control, and now her knee control is not so good on the bike. So when she's on the bike, her knee control, she's rolling in, which is, I'll show you when she does her single leg squat. But the main cause is not the ACL previous problem. It's actually because she's got an unstable hip. Now, genetically, Ella has a hip that semi sort of dislocates. It subluxes. Now you'll notice if you look up at the hip joint here, when we go from a straight position and push her internally rotated, she clicks out like that. So if you watch that again, when I pull it back, it comes in. Watch this area again. When I force her internally rotated and flex, bang, it pops out there. Now that is a naturally unstable joint. She's got a very loose capsular joint. She's got a, the shape of hip joints is a little bit different. What that means is she has to work super hard with her hip control to control her knee. So she needs a lot of strength, a lot of sort of agility work on that hip because the right one doesn't do it, so it's a left side of hip problem. Um, that, in combination with the old ACL problems, is just giving her a few issues. So if I show you on this knee, what I'm looking at is the medial side of that patella and right on that cartilage line of where that femoral condyle is, right on that sort of notch area, that's where she's super sore. And she's getting that because of loading pain into the cartilage because her knee is not tracking perfectly. And this happens pretty common in cyclists because they focus on just straight line stuff and they don't have to weight bear on their feet. And she hasn't done a lot of running for a long period of time, so she's not used to that loading. So what we're working on is some exercises to help strengthen the knee up. She's a little bit weak there, but her quads are fine. We just need to focus on the hip as a priority. So let's have a look at that. So one of the exercises we're getting her doing is a classic step down. Now I like this because it's a single leg squat, but she's going backwards. She focuses on her eccentric control backwards. What we've put on her is a band for her knee. Now this band, like you've seen in many other videos, this one is dragging her this way. She's got to focus on here because her biggest problem with that hip subluxation problem she's got going on here is her knee loves to roll inwards. So when she's on the bike, if you imagine she's sitting on a saddle, she doesn't have to weight bear, okay? She just has, you know, her foot is cleated and fixed into a pedal. Then when she bends and strains her knee, she's getting a little bit of this wobble. So she's doing a little bit of that on the bike. Now, if you do that for 90 kilometers, you're gonna start getting some issues through here, and that's what she's getting. So while this is settling down and this sort of cartilage you know, edema, if you like, in the bone is getting better. She's working on her quads to make sure they stay alive. We did, we'll show you that extension. We need to fix the root cause of the problem. We can't tighten her hip up. We can stabilize it by getting a super strong up here. So this band teaches her brain to make sure she works on that external rotation of her knee, which does two things. So try that for me. This one is teaching her brain, hey, work this muscle in here, get it stronger to control your knee. But it's also teaching her patterns of movement. So when she does single leg squat work, which is like the bending and straightening she does on the bike, she's learning to control that position, keep her knee by repeating a task of that middle of the kneecap needs to sit over the middle of the foot. Now remember, the middle of the foot is between the second and third toe, not over the big toe. So don't get confused, and she's she's got to look at her her kneecap and go, okay, it needs to be over the second, third toe, not over my big toe. So if she looks down, she should see on the inside of her knee, she should be able to spot her big toe. If she cannot see her big toe, it means she's rolling in like that. So the reason we've got that band there is twofold. She needs to have that as a biofeedback, meaning her, she needs to teach her brain, pull out against the band. So she pulls out against the band, she fires that but also get the resistance give us that sort of strengthening tool to help you track it properly. So let's just go through a few of those. You'll see that when she tries to do this single leg squat, she's pretty good. She's practiced a little bit. What she used to do was a bit of a wobble and she'd sort of cave inwards like this, but now she's tracking a lot better. 
the more she repeats this, the more it's going to become natural, the strengthening gets better, and then, of course, when she gets back on the bike, there'll be less wobble going on. So that's an excellent one for her. Now, another one, of course, of my favorites is this one here, because this is directly working on her abduction work of the left hip. By pushing this knee this way, she's working in a contralateral hip, and she needs that as a control mechanism to help her pelvis stay level, okay? because remember, when she's on the bike, her pelvis is staying relatively level because she's sitting on a seat. Now she's not sitting on a seat, so she's got to work harder with this, which is going to help her in spades when she goes back on that bike. And this one, she can really focus on letting that knee come forward and get the strengthening work going on here. Okay, so when you do a ball squat like this, obviously the knee going outwards triggers the hip, and people, a lot of people feel this in their hip to get that you know, glute knee working really, really hard to control the knee. But for her, she can get deeper with this because she's got some decent quad strength. Because, hey, she's a cyclist, right? She's got some quads. We can actually get her doing some really good patellofemoral strengthening here and loading this area up because all that is pain free. So while she's settling that sort of inflammatory problem down, she can actually strengthen the heck out of it, which is a really good option for her. At the same time, she's working on watching that knee track beautifully over that foot. So she's, you know, like I said before, reprogramming her brain to get that knee absolutely tracking perfectly. So when she's on the bike and she's really focusing on the race, she doesn't have to worry about her knee and her knee stops rolling in, which is the cause of her problems in the first place. So one other little thing I want to show you today is her doing her knee extensions banded. Now this one she can do at home. She doesn't have to go to the gym to do this because she can just use her power band at home, hook it underneath the dining room chair here. I've got it underneath the quad bench. But this one here, when you do this sort of thing, the easiest way of doing it is putting it around your foot and just flipping it around so it locks on your toe. What I want to show you, even though she doesn't have any pain squatting, okay, she can get on the bike at the moment, it doesn't really hurt. But what I want to show you is the actual, you know, what looks and seems like a great quad, what the pain on the injury is doing to her deactivation of her quads when she does the knee extensions. And this is a really important exercise for her to do on the eccentric phase, and I'll show you that. So if she strains her leg out into extension using her quad to extend her knee, when she lets that go, so she goes two out, one down, if you watch, when she goes down, there's a lot of shaking going on here, okay? And that little quad muscle starts sort of quivering a little bit as it's, you can see that weakness kick in. So try it again, do a few of those for you. So when she does this, we're just training the eccentric phase only. We want to do the control part there. So over time, she needs a heavy enough band that she can control downwards eccentrically, but it's too hard for her to pull up concentrically. So she gives it a helping hand, she just focuses on that rim. And that's going to help her with the patellofemoral strength loading. But you'll see on that little shake going on there, that's your weakness. Now, if you look at the comparison to her good leg, which by all sort of means looks absolutely fine, they look identical, but you'll notice on this one, when she comes down, it's just so much smoother, okay? She doesn't have that shake going on as much on the left one. And she feels like it's just a lot easier to control, right? And you can actually see the size of that VMO is better. But hey, this is her ACL. Remember, she's had three ACLs. I expect that to be not as good. Now, whether that is that not as good because she's got a current knee pain, or is it not as good because she's got an old ACL and it just is not 100%. And you'll find that with some people, they just never quite 100% with the quad unless they really, really push it. Regardless, it doesn't matter. We need to try and make sure we safeguard this current knee pain by getting that better, like this one, at least sort of at least 95% to the other side so she doesn't really feel or notice that shake going on. That'll be one of her missions as part of getting her knee right. See you next time.